The Adventure of Ryata and Emily in the Tellula Dungeon on the Fourth Floor, where they encounter a horde of bat monsters. However, Emily notices a rare monster passing through the area. Ryata quickly defeats the rare slime monster and obtains a necklace-shaped drop item that can duplicate drops when defeating monsters. Emily is delighted with the gift from Ryata and treasures it, considering it a special present for her. However, Ryata, not fully aware of the situation, explains that the necklace he gave her, called the Double Drop Necklace, provides advantages which upsets Emily as she feels he is mocking her for having a low drop skill. Despite her irritation, Emily decides to try wearing the necklace and ends up getting twice the usual drops from the bat monsters. Upon returning home, Emily immediately prepares a dish made from the drop item bamboo sprouts she obtained from defeating the bats. While enjoying a cup of tea, Ryata contemplates moving to a larger house with a more spacious kitchen than their current residence. He feels bad about the small kitchen that Emily has to use. Thinking Ryata plans to move to a new house on his own, Emily feels sad, but Ryata surprises her by inviting her to move in together, so they don't have to pay rent for two houses. Emily appreciates Ryata's decision to move and wants to join, but she also reminds him not to overwork himself as he did when he was alive. Ryata went to the Adventurer Guild's office to sell the bamboo sprouts he obtained from the fourth floor of the Telugu dungeon. There, he met Urza and inquired about the price of the bamboo sprouts. Urza was puzzled because it was rare to encounter adventurers selling bamboo sprouts. Suddenly, a woman noticed Ryata carrying the bamboo sprouts and pleaded with him to share some with her. Ryata didn't mind giving her a bit and was unsure what she would do with it. To his surprise, the woman threw the bamboo sprouts in the air and skillfully sliced it into beautiful pieces, turning it into a sashimi-like dish as she tasted the raw bamboo sprouts from the dungeon. Drop! The woman started crying tears of joy, praising its deliciousness, perfect texture, sweetness, and the lack of any bitterness. She believed it was the drop from a rare monster. Ryata was perplexed by the woman's reaction and didn't know how to respond. However, she bought all the bamboo sprouts she had tasted and paid 20,000 kilo for it. Ryata was still confused about the amount he received, unsure if he had sold the bamboo sprouts too cheaply or too expensively. Even if he expressed disappointment, it would only make things more confusing. Urza informed Ryata that the woman who enjoyed the food was Eric Macy, a prominent figure in a culinary world. Anyone who could make Eric Macy genuinely love their prepared food would receive a high payment for their efforts. Urza saw an opportunity and offered Ryata an exclusive contract regarding the bamboo sprouts he obtained from the fourth floor of the dungeon, believing it would become a hot topic throughout Seacrow City. After some contemplation, Ryata considered the exclusive contract as a way to earn money easily and eventually accepted it, especially with Urza's convincing and the bonus she offered for the sales. She also encouraged Ryata to sell the selling rights to the adventure or guild, as it would become a branded product. In the end, Ryata accepted the offer without hesitation. Upon returning to the Nihonium dungeon, Ryata wanted to improve his ability stats when he saw a girl fighting a skeleton ready to attack her. Reflexively, Ryata wanted to help, but the girl quickly commanded her troops to hold back the skeleton. She swiftly beheaded the skeleton and put its head into her magic box. A native the girl explained to Ryata that she was Princess Margaret. They were conducting a drop item experiment in Nihonium since nothing seemed to drop there. However, they heard a rumor about the research revealing that the monsters inside could drop air. With strong reasons, they conducted the direct experiment and found that it worked, as long as they used the magic box. The sale of the magic box and directly led to a very successful outcome. Ryata, trying to be realistic, assumed the successful result was due to Princess Margaret being involved. Since they brought a magical trolley to avoid frequent trips to Nihonium Dungeon for the safety of Princess Margaret, Ryata also desired to have a magic trolley. Back home, Ryata discussed the idea of a new house or a magic trolley with Emily. Emily thought the magic trolley would be more efficient for carrying drop items from the dungeon and could bring back more drop items than they usually could carry before. The next day, they went to the magic trolley shop and heard crying. Emily recognized the voices Olga's and told Ryata to go inside the shop and check the situation. Ryata promptly asked Olga about her condition and what happened. 
Tearfully, Olga explained that her father had not returned since yesterday because he went to search for a flower. Emily knew about the flower and understood that Olga's father went to a dungeon that dropped flower drop items called arsenic. Ryata comforted Olga and promised to find her father, rushing off to the dungeon immediately. They arrived at the arsenic dungeon and were greeted by monsters scattered all over the dungeon's paths. Since the monsters were stationary and non-aggressive, they managed to run past them. However, when they saw that the path ahead was tightly blocked by the monster horde, they had no choice but to defeat them. Ryata tried shooting his weapon, but the bullets bounced off the monster's tough bodies. He then asked Emily to defeat them using her large hammer, and the horde was quickly defeated, dropping many flowers as moved. After collecting the drop items, they hurriedly searched for Olga's father and found him asleep on the next floor. Ryata's attempts to wake him up were unsuccessful, so Emily, in anger due to his carelessness and lack of concern for his daughter, woke him up by hitting the dungeon floor with her large hammer. Olga's father woke up and fried at Emily's outburst. Olga's father had been searching for materials to create a new prototype for his magic trolley, which he had mentioned before. He pointed to a rare monster as the source of the materials. Ryata understood the situation and tried to help him get the desired item. With one strike of Emily's hammer, the rare monster was defeated, and it dropped a blue flower. Orton then suggested they leave the dungeon and try something Ryata had done before, putting a drop item on the ground and waiting for it to transform back into a monster. Once transformed, Orton attempted to catch the monster but failed as it flew too high. Ryata shot a freezing bullet, immobilizing the monster, and they managed to capture it. This helped Olga's father complete the magic trolley, which he then gifted to them as a reward for protecting the city from the previous rampage of the gorilla monster. Ryata felt a bit awkward receiving such a generous gift, but Orton insisted they take it. Olga, knowing well that the magic trolley made by her father was excellent, reminded them to take good care of it. Ryata and Emily returned to tell a blue floor four to hunt bats that dropped the bamboo sprouts. They have collected a large quantity in the magic trolley's red indicator shows that it has exceeded its capacity. Ryata is grateful for the usefulness of the magic trolley in gathering their loot during the hunt. Upon arriving at the Adventurer's Guild, Ryata notices Ayrza dealing with an angry adventurer who is unhappy with the price of the item he sold. The atmosphere in the guild is tense, and the other adventurers are unable to help. The adventurer, believing that Urza is lying about the price she offered for his items, becomes aggressive and tries to attack her. Ryata intervenes by shooting an ice bullet at the man's hand to prevent him from hitting Urza. He informs the man that Urza's offered price was accurate, and he proves it using the magic trolley. The item's value matches the price Urza gave. The man becomes even angrier at attempts to attack Ryata instead. Due to Ryata's strong status, dealing with the large man is not a problem, and with one slap, Ryata knocks him unconscious. Thus, Ryata saves Urza once again. She is grateful to Ryata because she couldn't do much to defend herself. Ryata, on the other hand, thanks for helping him when he first arrived in Secro City. Urza then gives Ryata a kiss to show her true feelings for him and leaves. They resume hunting together enough money for a better house. When they have enough money to rent a new house, Ryata seems to have the intention of buying a house of his own, so they move to a larger rented house while saving up to make a purchase. Will Ryata be able to buy a new house? Will there be new companions joining him?